I uh, don't really get nervous, but I am actually vibrating <laughs> right now. <laughs> this is genuinely a dream come true for me. Um, I haven't been able to find the tweet, but I know about two years ago, I put a tweet out saying that I would love to do a TED Talk. I didn't think that I would ever be standing here tonight. Um, and I suppose tonight, I want to share a story with you about a journey of my own self-awareness. So, picture this. It's a Saturday morning, and I'm in the kitchen with my two little girls. And as per usual, I'm gaping about and pretend to make pancakes and pretend to be a master chef. And my two little munchkins are at the table scribbling and colouring in. And we like to call this Saturday Morning Art Club. So as soon as the pancakes, um, obviously layered in syrup, are scoffed, we wipe the sticky fingers and it's time for the big art reveal. And my youngest, Eilish, produces this. Really cute. This is me taking our gorgeous Gracie for a dander. And unfortunately, we lost Gracie three years ago to cancer. And as we reminisced about what a beautiful dog she was and the, the great crack that we had with her, I started to look at the picture and I said, Eilish, is this a little poop bag in my hand? And she looked at me and she went, Mommy, it's your phone. And I thought, right, of course it's my phone. So later that same night, we were having a, a family night games night. I sound like a real Mary Poppins. I'm not really. It just so happens that this is what we were doing. And family night games night can take the shape of one, two, three, the floor is lava. Have you ever played it? Really good fun. Funny fashions, cards, or good old homemade charades. So charades takes the form of me getting a piece of paper, ripping it up, and writing down random things, like pretend to be a hairdresser, pretend to make pizza, pretend to be a cat. So it was Eilish's go, and she picked the little piece of paper out, and she looked at it, nodded her head confidently, sat it down, and did a thing like this. And in two seconds, eat the lily, be a mummy! And I went, right, okay. So folks, I stand here before you and say that my name is Neve McElhatton and I am an addict. It all started as social, infrequent usage, but now for the last three years, I have been a full blown addict. I am addicted to my smartphone and to social media. Like someone kicking me in the gut, I thought, is this really how my kids perceive me? Here I am on my crusade as a single mummy to mold these girls into socially confident, conversationally literate young girls. And they think I am this moron with my head buried in the screen. My mum once said to me, in fact, more than once, uh, did you come to have coffee with me or look at that bloody phone? And another friend actually said, you do realize, you know, you're the only person that I get an instant reply on WhatsApp from. So I started to think. And believe me, what you're about to hear is an absolute contradiction to everything that I do within the realms of my working life. I bring people and businesses together through digital technology and social media. I have been really fortunate enough to travel the globe to deliver training to teach people how to do this. And I started to wonder, at what point did these devices creep into our lives to become an extension of our right arm? Am I the only addict? Is there research out there that proves that there is, in fact, an addiction? <laughs> and guess what? Yes, there is. A lot of evidence. So much so, they're claiming social media as the crack cocaine of the digital age. Aside from society having the highest levels of social anxiety, social awkwardness, eating disorders and depression, I decided to take my research a little further and I delved a little deeper and I found even more shocking stories. This is an avatar child from the online game Prius. A couple in Seoul got so addicted to this game 
that their own little baby daughter died of starvation and neglect. This is a true story. They got so engrossed in this game that they were spending up to 12 hours a day in a cyber cafe that their own gorgeous daughter died of a consequence. And we all gasp and think, oh, that's not real, but it is real. But in five minutes from now, we move on and get on with our life. When did this become socially acceptable? So as luck would have it, uh, in my journey of awareness, there was a stormy night and whatever happened, the aerial outside, it disconnected from the TV and it wasn't picking up the channels. And because I'm obviously so addicted to my phone, I don't watch TV, so I didn't fix it. And I also cancelled my broadband contract at home as well because I have a little wireless dongle that I use and I have 20 gig on my phone. So I couldn't justify the spend. But here's the amazing thing. My girls didn't come looking at the TV in the, ta in the living room. They didn't come crying saying, can we get on the iPad? There was none of that. They went outside and they played with their friends. And when the weather was crap, they came inside and they played with their toys. And we built our little bridge in the house with not having broadband connection because we didn't miss it, nor did we need it. But here's the thing. They get their YouTube and seven supergirls fixed when they go to their daddies, so it's all right. <laughs> so this is a beautiful place in Portugal. And um, we went on holidays there this year. And I'd ordered, uh, obviously, a transfer from the airport to the villa. And uh, of course, me being me, misorganized, OCD, onto the phone, tapping the address and to see how long it was going to take to get to the villa. I'm on holiday. Aoife Lily taps me and she says, Mummy, what's that over there? And I'm so busy typing in the address. I say, sir, what's that? And I looked up and I thought, there's the sun. I'm in the stunning Algarve, and I'm sitting like a plunker, putting in the address to see how long it's going to take. So I pulled Aoife Lily in here and Eilish in here, and we looked out the window and we talked about all the beautiful scenery that we could see, and we talked about the crack that we were going to have in the water parks and in the pool and all of that. So a quick tip, folks, look up and look out, because the journey is going to take as long as it's going to take. So. You know when somebody quits the cigarettes and they kind of become like the antichrist of smoking? Well, I kind of became like this on my days of my digital detox. And I was standing in a supermarket ready to check out with my groceries. And this young girl at about 14 stood there like this. And me, in my newly aware state, I tapped her on the arm and I said, excuse me, pet. I said, we couldn't just move uh, over there and let me put my groceries through. And I said, <laughs> That's the response, <laughs> and sulked over to the wall. And I looked, and her mother was at the other end of the checkout in a cold sweat, packing the bags and the groceries for her beloved family. And I wanted to say, uh, could you help your mummy? But no, I didn't. But I did continue to watch her. Nothing. Totally alien, unaware of any human interaction. No movement, but the flicker of an eye. And then this, shoulders back, head up. The phone went up. The head tilted, the smile, the selfie, right? This big smile. I thought, Jesus, you weren't like that two seconds ago. The phone came down, the smile disappeared. Another perfect example of the superficial image that she was portraying to her friends on Snapchat or whatever channel she wanted to send it on. So when I was out for lunch then, uh, a few weeks ago with the team, we sat around the table and the four of us were all on our phones. And I said, guys, phones in to the middle of the table now. And we did. I said, the first person that lifts their phone lifts the bill. Did anybody lift the phone? No, because they're all so miserable. Did anybody, <laughs> <laughs> did anybody die? No, nothing happened. But what did we do? We had a great catch up, a good laugh. Even if it was only for 45 minutes, it was great. So why are we doing this to ourselves? We need to become more aware. And just when we talk about human interaction, even dating has gone to pot. If you're looking to find your new partner in crime, it's all Tinder, Bumble, Match.com, Plenty of Fish, TED Talk. I could give you a Bill, Bob, Sam, Nick 
and Tom Talk, <laughs> right? I've heard all of their gripes and groans. I've heard all of their amazing accolades and achievements. I've heard about every dating disaster, every psycho, and every lunatic they've ever gone out with. But guess what? They keep coming back for more of the same boring conversation. Where are you from yourself? <laughs> Is it nice weather where you're at? What do you work at? I've got so bored trying to tell people what it is that I do. I lie now and I say I'm a cardiologist and it seems to go down really, really well. Have you been single for long? What are you looking for yourself on here? And I'm like, well, you know, Einstein, there's no flies on you. Uh -huh. And then another clinker is, how tall are you? I'm thinking, what does that actually matter? Because in a matter of moments, this conversation is going to end. We're never going to meet. And aside from your photographs being 10 years old, and in reality, you're five stone heavier, we still continue with this monotonous script. I got so bored with these conversations. I decided it was my duty to help these guys. So I offered them some advice on how to talk to women. They have totally lost the art of chivalry. So I thought it was my duty to teach how to talk to women. Are we going to lose the capability of delivering real life relationships to virtual relationships? Is this going to become the norm? Because in fact, I'll tell you something, Japan is already predicting a third in the drop of its population by 2060, because young Japanese men do not have, nor do they want, real life relationships. They're happy playing in their little rooms with their little games, virtually connected, yet socially disconnected. I have, um, very lucky, I have 50,000 followers on Facebook and uh, half a million followers on Instagram. Um, like, I don't really, but it sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> I all had you there. But that's the thing. Who cares? Because if you're stuck in Cork, it's five o'clock in the morning, and you need somebody to come and rescue you, who's going to be that person? I have five. Five real friends that will come and get me. So tonight, I want you to be aware, to keep it real. And when I go for coffee with my mum now, I leave my phone in the car. When I go for dinner, I leave my phone in the car. And the next time, it's Friday night, and you want to chill out, but your baby girl is saying, Mommy, look at my handstand, look at my handstand. And it looks more like a little baby piglet trying to jump. Put the phone down and tell her, that's brilliant. You're brilliant. You're getting there now. Thank you.